Before we had what? Uh, Before we had what? What's the main thing we use? Computer, certain type. So how was he able to do that? He had more access to more of his brain. How much? How much? Figure like this: If there's twenty, really? if twenty-seven percent is the average person, he was using about forty-five percent of his brain. And look what he was able to do. Okay, so if someone who has access to about 85, 90% of their brain, this is a person who could potentially do crazy things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he came up even like something like that. Like something we take for granted like chemistry. You guys studied chemistry in school. Think about the atomic bomb and things that they created. How were they able to foresee? How were they able to have the imagination to say, okay, this is what I want to happen, and then be able to experiment with the right chemistry to make it really happen? Like Honda. Honda just made this brand new robot. Uh, it's completely uh, lifelike, this robot. I know. Now, the inventors of the Honda robot, right? How, how are they able to figure out, okay, we're going to program this robot and make it a real life thing. And it has a brain, the robot. That the robot, if it goes somewhere like this and it's too cold, it'll close the window and say, it's too cold in here. So it has built in what? Nerve cells. It has built in nerve cells. Okay? It also can make expressions. Like if you make a joke, it laughs. Uh -huh. <laughs> it, it will laugh. It will like literally react to it. Like, you see how they make you guys laugh? The robot will start laughing. Oh, like, uh -huh. No, no, no. It's not like, it's not like, you know, like you have like a robot that makes like that corny laugh. It really laughs. Like it laughs like, you know, the way you guys laugh. And then it says, that was a great joke. And then it tries to make a joke off of your joke. <laughs> it's pretty weird, okay? And it says, and it'll even say, it'll even say, okay, it's 8 o'clock, it's time to go to sleep now, and I'll walk to its thing, and I'll go to sleep just like you. The only, thing that, it, the only thing that it can't do is what? It doesn't go to what? It doesn't go to the bed. <laughs> All right? The only, only thing it has to do is every now and then it's got to charge itself, okay? So, Why you touch on the touch? <laughs> it, probably, it probably has an iPod thing, which is pretty cool. But looking at this, when you're looking at the bare basics of the brain, it being the control center, the five senses, hearing, flat, you know, the idea that it stores information, all of this is the, great, the basis for the iPhone, robots, and all that stuff. You're thinking about how can we take this natural thing and create these artificial things. Okay? So keep that in mind. Now, if you want to get involved in a business where you do that kind of stuff, where you program um, a robot, you get into something called programming. Okay? Programming is what? What's some programming languages they have out there that you would have to learn if you wanted to create programs? Um, Anybody know them? Morse code? Uh, Morse code was the original kind. How does Morse code go like this, right? But now, nowadays, if you go to Stuyvesant or something like that, they'll teach you like C++. C++? Yeah, C++ is a programming language where you write code on the computer, oh, like for example, I want binary code. binary code. If you, I want my robot to turn left, pick up the cup, and pour it out. So okay. I create a code that tells you turn left, pick up the cup, and pour it out. Uh, <laughs> I want to do that on the computer. Why can't you just write it down, like turn left? Because robots only respond to ones and zeros. All computer code, all computer code is ones and zeros. It's just a combination. So for example, if I got one zero one one zero zero one, that would be. That would be a code for pick up your right right of your finger. <coughs> then if I had one zero 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 one one zero one, that would be a code for the robot to turn left. So what you do as a program, How do you know? huh? Because when I went to high school, it was taught us. So if you want to program, you learn how to write the code, and then it makes the computer or the robot or your iPhone or anything do what it does. Like for example, here's the iPhone right here. In order for me to go like this. To slide it, that's a code. Yeah, that's a password. That's a password. You told us you just, you just told us a password. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It changes, don't worry. <laughs> but for example, you see the apps? Yeah. You see like the app like Progressive? What game do you have? Progressive is all code. So now you see the lady pops up? Yeah. Now let's say goodbye to her. That's code. If I want to know what the date is, that's a code. All that is code. You see that? Does that woman do anything? Huh? She smiles. Now, for example, you see this ring right here? You see how it, it rotates like this? To make it go up and down like that, each one of those is a code. Okay, you see the color stream? Code. So as a programmer, you spend a lot of time just programming, programming, programming. Yeah. What about a nerd? Does a nerd use like 37% of their brain? 
A nerd will probably, I mean, first of all, you don't want to say he's a nerd. You want to say he's intellectually advanced. But a person who's really smart has a really high IQ, this is a person that's using more percentage of their brain matter. Okay? How do you access more? How do you access more? By reading a lot of books. Uh, you know what's the best thing to do it? And Ken actually has it, we have it here. There's this book, these brain challenges that we used to do in the other class. And basically, it's ways, you want to, basically you want to frustrate your brain. So a lot of people, most of the time, for example, you see this in my right hand? Okay, the left side of my brain tells my right hand to go up. And then the right side of my brain tells my left hand to go up. Now, you guys, anybody go to martial arts? No. Now, when you're in martial arts, right, for example, if you exercise your right leg, that makes your left leg really strong. And if you exercise your left leg, that makes your, your right leg very strong. It's opposites. So your brain looks like this. Let's say this is the front of it, and crisscrosses like that. So look, this is your head. Don't be, don't be crazy. So let's say, for example, here's the brain inside the head right here, right? So you got your left side telling your right side what to do, and your right side telling your left side what to do. Yeah. Now, why do we have it like that? I don't know. It's supposed to the upper. Why does a dog have a tail? Mm -hmm. Why does a dog have a tail? To keep it balanced, okay? So the idea is the brain is designed or it's created so that it crisscrosses to keep the balance. Now, if you want to learn how to write something, which side of your brain do you use? Uh, your left side, okay? If you want to do math, what side? Right. There you go. So the idea is, if you like to write more than you like to do math, which side is going to develop more? Left. Uh, left, right? And if you like to do math more than you like to write, which side is going to develop more? Right. Now, who's, now, for example, how many lefties do you have? How many people write with their left hand? Nobody? Okay. How many people write with their right hand? All right. So which side of your brain is going to be more developed just off of that? Left. Your left side. Now, what do you call somebody who uses both hands? Oh, oh, my God. Who's good at using both hands? Switch-handed? Not switch-handed. That is, no. Uh, yeah. Switch-handed. Right, right no, uh, what do you got? Weirdo? Not a weirdo. <laughs> not a weirdo. <laughs> Somebody, what do you got? Alice Lister? Alice Lister? No, we call it, when you can use your left hand and write as well as you can write with your right hand, you call it ambidextrous. Yeah. All right? So everybody say ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. ambidextrous means like, okay, if they say to you, hey, man, you can write with your right hand? Yeah. Can you write with your left hand? Yes, I can also do that too. Okay, now if you look at the way the world is designed, right? Is it designed for right-handed people or left-handed people? Both. Both. Really? Right. Right. So like, for example, if you look at this door, right? This door, okay, if I'm a right-handed person, right? And I want to open this door and I keep my hand on this door, what's going to happen? Pushed. Pushed. Am I going to be able to go straight? No. Am I going to get tangled up? Okay. Tangled up. So this door right here is actually made for someone who's what? Left-handed so you can walk right in. Now if you look at your desks at school, the desks at school, you guys sit in a square desk like this? Yeah. Now when you go to high school, your desks aren't like that anymore. I know. They're separated. They're separated. When you go to take the OSA test, don't you sit in those kind of desks? Like, yeah. yeah right? So that desk usually is made for someone who has a right hand because you rest your arm there. Now, if you're a left-handed person, guess what? It's going to be kind of uncomfortable for you, right? I'll tell you something else. In college, they give you a scholarship, ten thousand dollars for being left-handed. Oh wow! Yeah, because it's considered to have, it's considered to be a disability almost because the world, in most parts, is designed for right-handed people. Also, awesome. which side is the car on like, when you drive? Uh, right. Let's see. Left, left, left. Left side, right? Okay. In other countries in Europe, what side? Right. Right, right side. Okay. Why do they have it on the left side in America? Uh,